a little bit about judges Giovanni Falcone and Paolo Borsellino. We have to they, jump right into Can we talk about social stuff first? Wait a second. Why? Because my I pal said, Billy Dixon's okay. birthday's today. Billy, first student <laughs> in St. Francis College history to be granted tenure on the seven year Bravo. plan. Billy made it. Can I continue now? Seven years. Can I continue now? Billy. I hope you have another 71 <laughs> years, man, because you and I have been through a lot together. I love you very much. And when I go home, we're going to celebrate, brother. All right. So Judge Giovanni Falcone and Paolo Borsellino, let me tell you guys that they are Italian heroes. In fact, there's uh, commemorations and celebrations all over Italy for um, the anniversary, which is May 23rd, of Giovanni Falcone. No. So let me tell you guys that these guys were trailblazing in their work against the mafia. All right, so if I were to do this when you were talking, you <laughs> I, would get it be, I would get it between my ears. Anyway, so I'm they, in a were, good mood today. <laughs> they were trailblazing. Um, excuse me, can I finish now? Go ahead, finish. Okay, you owe me five bucks for interrupting twice. Uh, <laughs> so what they did is in the late 70s and 80s, what they did is follow the money. It was very basic stuff. They followed the money. And in fact, Giovanni Falcone is known to have looked at dozens and hundreds of bank accounts and handwritten uh, things down. Even though he had computers at his disposal, he was known for meticulously wanting to write everything down. And what they did is basically uh, during the maxi trials in the 80s is put uh, lots of mafia bosses behind bars. A lot of those uh, were overturned later, but their work was incredibly important. And they worked with uh, the Justice Department in New York uh, during the pizza connection, right, Alfred? What was the pizza connection? That was when some of the uh, pizza restaurants were involved in um, heroin uh, happenings. There were so many things happening in that period of time, Esther, between the 70s, 80s, and the beginning part of the 90s, yeah. when all the crap hit the fan. It was just unbelievable. But these two men are legitimate Italian heroes. Yeah. What but, so what happened on what May 23rd, um, he was coming home uh, to visit family because he, he had been repositioned to Rome. So he was in his car with his uh, wife, Francesca Morviglio, who is also a judge, and she was also an anti-mafia uh, crusader. And three other police officers. Now, Giovanni Falcone was known to love to drive around Sicily. So what happened was when he came, when they landed, he said to the driver, hey, do you mind if I drive this car? And so the driver went and sat in his chair and they were driving in Capici, which is a um, town right outside of Palermo. And the mafioso were in the bunkers on top of the hill and they detonated a bomb. It blew up a quarter mile of the um, highway. It registered as a small um, earthquake. And guess who the only person who survived? The driver who was sitting in Giovanni Falcone's seat. It's incredible. And then about 57 days later, his pal, his childhood friend, and also his colleague, Paolo uh, Porcelino, was heading home to his mom's as well in Palermo. And he was killed along with five other police officers. And you guys, what happened after that was incredible. The women, uh, the people, especially the women who just had it with the mafia, you know, their sons, brothers, um, husbands being taken uh, by the mafia, they went to the streets and said, basta with the mafia. And a huge anti-mafia movement uh, started that is still goes on today. And, you know, uh, the president of the Republic, Sergio Mattarella, who's so, um, brother was also killed by the mafia today said in a speech in Palermo he's here in Palermo he said uh if you're not against the mafia then you're you're helping them if you're not against the mafia you're helping them so that's a little bit of a context of what these judges did but really um it was what a pleasure it was a few years ago we got to go to palermo to see the commemoration right we saw the president of uh italy speak so we went to the uffici prison yeah that's where the maxi trial was held a spanish uh, old spanish prison where all the mafiosos were kept today and inside uh, we we went into the very courtroom which was caged they had all these cages where all the mafiosos were with 
And uh, it was very a very sobering experience. It yeah. was a very sobering experience. And you know what experience. I really like is that there were a lot of children present. And the point of that is to educate the young, make sure that they know uh, what an important thing, uh, what event that was, right? We, you know, Esther, um, in the United States of America, you know what a, an outlaw gang is, right? Yeah. All right. An outlaw gang, like, you know, those biker gangs are some really bad ones. Only only one percent of all bikers are are bad, are outlawed. One percent. That's it, and that's pretty much the same percentage of Sicilians. Maybe even less than one percent. That's a good Were point. involved in organized crime. Every society. Look at the uh, Yakata Yakuza in Japan. I mean, you name it. Every society. Look what in El Salvador, the M, whatever those guys are called. Over. Every society has a criminal slash pathological uh, element in it that fiercely resists authority. Yeah. Okay. But I'll tell you one thing I do know. Okay. The mafia then and the mafia today could not exist by itself. Okay. It takes three to tango. Okay. Basically three to tango. The first thing it had, the first leg of the stool, so to speak, are the criminals. Okay. And We'll talk a little bit about some of the major criminals in just a few minutes, but the criminal element, okay? Number two is the polit the political class. Now, mm -hmm. during, the, uh, during that era, the entire country of Italy, virtually the entire country of Italy was corrupt from the top, from the very top, from the prime minister's office to the bottom, okay? There were far more people on the take, okay? Uh, gold or lead. If you understand what I'm saying, you know, that's what they would say to them. He had take this bribe, gold, or else you're going to get shot. Gold or lead, okay? That's the second That's the second leg, so to speak. And the third leg, which is the most embarrassing of all, yeah. was the Catholic Church. They essentially were the bankers. They're the ones that laundered the money. Um, they had one of the largest bank failures. It was the eighth largest bank, the Vatican Bank at the time was a bank failure. There was all sorts of corruption. And as even maybe a pope was assassinated as a result of him trying to investigate. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of stories about it to this day about the, 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 the three ring circus that went by. Now, go ahead. Sorry. You know, and, and the other thing that we should mention is not just those judges that were pre-skirt murdered, uh, journalists murdered. And I have to tell you that it's so interesting around this time, you know, all the anti-mafia groups that uh, are um, exist here. We met two of them and I'm going to leave you a link to a video episode that we did, but we went to the celebration in Palermo and there are people heading these groups where their goal is to get sort of kids off the streets, right? So one of them, uh, the sailing for boys, the other one does the um, music for boys. So a lot of the activities surrounding trying to get the kids off the street, right? Well, so here's the thing, S, okay? That's why I scream about helping this country out, okay? Especially with the uh, unemployment rate it is because the higher the unemployment rate, the more people are unemployed and of course, they don't have the safety nets like you have in the States, okay, getting 400 bucks a week. Are you kidding me? You know what you get over here? You know what the stimulus amount was it per family? $688 for one year. 688 bucks. Can't even buy the bread for that. But anyways, the unemployed act as the uh, muscle for and for the recruiting, um, uh, recruiting for the mafia organized crime. Today, they're primarily involved in, in drugs. That are used in the United States of America. America has an insatiable appetite. The pace comes from Afghanistan. The, the poppies are born from Afghanistan, mm -hmm. transiting through Sicily, made into a paste, and then brought into the United States where it's reconstitution, reconstitution or else with Colombia, okay? And uh, it's drugs. It's all about drugs. For the, I mean, for the way back, a number two position could be gambling and prostitution, but Drugs. Droga. Yeah. It's all about droga. the droga. Let's say hello. Sue Willard, thank you for becoming Hi, a member. Welcome, Good morning, Sue. Thank Christine you. and Travis are here. Buena Domenica from Gulfport in Florida. Buongiorno from Muggy, New York. Shame. Hey, where are you guys watching from? I want to know. Um, what will we learn from each other today? Always looking 
forward for these. Figures. I have something to Helen, teach you. In just a minute, I want to know, Helen, if you knew the story about um, these two heroes. Okay, we have uh, Dina here. Buongiorno from Vancouver. 7 a.m. Oh, Dina. Hey, Silva. you finally made it. Uh, Pac really says Kagutsa. I'm jealous. Kagutsa. That's what my mother used to say. Kagutsa. Patro <laughs> is here. Uh, I grew up Andy. calling it basketball. <laughs> Bat squash. And the, uh, uh, Tim says, I grew up calling it baseball bat squash. I want to know if you guys have had a kukutsa. Chicago, ciao, Stoli. Stoli, uh, Joe Dolly. Brenda. Sorry to miss your life off to church. Joe, service. I love you, man. You're a Bless good guy. Bless you. Uh, good morning. All right. Hello. Julie's here from Canada. What's Mama oh, there's cooking? There's a whole bunch We've of people. A good where's, one. Where's Jimmy Ingram? Jim Ingram is here. He goes, of course, <laughs> where are the stars of the show? There you are, Jimmy. You showed up. Uh, now we can we continue. Uh, Maja <laughs> is here. Um, okay. Kiara, good morning. All right. Let me see here. Guys, the truth about Falcone and Balsalini murdered were by mainstreams and misunderstood too much times they accused the mafia for them killed, but the bitter truth is they had been killed. Not sure what you're trying to say. What's the rest of it? Um, Not, it, got, it got emptied out. The okay. truth is, is that, I mean, this, you know what the truth is? The truth is that Borsalino and Falcone probably was scraping up against the, uh, the politician's door, okay? And uh, because... Toto Riena, uh, Bino, uh, Provenzione, uh, Provenzoni, those guys couldn't operate here. Yeah, he said killed by Italian yeah, politicians. Right, Do right. you really believe Mafia would have killed the heroes without yeah. uh, political no, support? No, no, I do not. I do not. I think Andrione, yeah, could. the guy that was the prime minister at the time had been in politics since right right after the fascists fell, okay? He had just about any every single job you could think of. He was a little guy. Uh, they called him Beezlebub, um, Prime Minister mm -hmm. Andriotti. He was uh, accused of murder a whole bunch of times. The guy was just, in my view, a weasel. I never liked the man. I never liked his politics. Uh, and they were wired. Okay, they were wired. They, the, the political class, especially in Palermo, yeah. okay, between uh, the uh, uh, senators, et cetera, over there. As a matter of fact, a couple of those guys were, the two brothers, uh, uh, were assassinated. It was a sordid. It was a sordid story. But the biggest and most interesting of the whole story was the Colleonisi uh, clan, the people mm -hmm. from Colleone. Colleone always was a very strong town. Don't think it's a little backwater town in in the province. Uh, in centuries before, it was a, tr a preferred uh, trading partner. You know, the Romans liked them and so forth. Strategically, it's, it was, it's in a good location right. on top of the <clears throat> right. mountain. Or and the old god mafiosi. Okay, they were they had their own honor and their own set of rules mm -hmm. uh, when they did everything. Okay, it was a it was a gentlemanly type of thing. I mean, to be in the to be in the mafia in those days wasn't like what it is today. Okay, you had the initiation ceremony, but there was a certain code of conduct that you adhered to. The old god, the mafiosi, and they they fought according to the rules of the old god. The Colonisi clan, which by the way just wasn't one, one clan, but it was loosely associated with people from other areas, especially Catania. Uh, the, yeah. the, the, the major family here in Catania, the Santa Paolo family of clans, it's not just one family. They were in cahoots and they changed the rules of the game. And one by one, the Palamans were picked off, assassinated. And those, those little towns that were loyal to them got obliterated by the Colonisi. And the Colonisi were the ones that ended up getting in getting in control. And they're the ones that made the deals with, say, for example, Nandragata, the Calabrian guys, mm -hmm. Camarada up in uh, um, Naples. And so there wasn't just one, there's not just one mafia, right. okay? It's like, as I said to you, organized crime has been in existence uh, in Italy. And it's, Forever. And it's and really, every other country yeah, too. It's a second economy even today. Don't think that it's gone away with the anti mafia. In, in some it level, hasn't. it's here. Aldina, yeah. it's crime an issue in Sicily. A friend recently told me that theft is very common. I'm concerned, of course, because I plan to move it. Okay, so here's what we tell our travelers all the time, right? When you're in the city of Catania, when you're in the city of Palermo, when you're in New York, when you're in any major city, 
watch yourself. You know, it, it's going to happen. Theft happens, but it's not. It's not like a huge deal, especially in some of these uh, smaller towns. Listen, if you're an honest person, okay, uh, you're you're not considered. You're you, you're pretty safe, okay. Uh, the violence takes place within the organized crime community. Typically, someone doesn't get paid or someone loans money, doesn't get their money back, et cetera. They don't want visitors, they don't want expats or anything like that to be harmed. Why? Because they have morphed. Organized crime now is not the same guy that carries a gun in his waistband. Right now, they're, you know, they're bankers, they're lawyers, et cetera, who own big, gigantic corporations. Sometimes the hotels that you stayed at, the restaurants that you go to, uh, are owned by a group who has organized crime connections, okay? So the last thing that they, they want to do is they don't want to have you become afraid. Yeah, now, are there sure. rogue elements? Are there rogue elements? Of course. Of course there's rogue elements, but it's pretty safe. I mean, if you go to Catania right now and you walk on the Vietna, the major touristic Vietnam. area, there's a cop on every block. Yeah. Okay. And military too. And military there. They're there's military there. You feel very safe. So the answer yeah. to that question is no. But, but lurking in the backgrounds, lurking in the unsavory neighborhoods, yeah. okay, the innards, so to speak, of any big city lurk organized crime who are selling their drugs or whatever it is yeah. they're doing to that particular clientele and those were the turf wars that take place just like in the united states of america so let me just say uh escape to sicily is here finally here so these two guys i have to escape tell you guys to sicily. i have to hey, tell I you know guys, those guys you know those guys huh? hey, no, no those are not them oh that's these somebody guys else. brought a, a place in catania and they're re Furbishing and remodeling, and you got to follow them. Uh, they've got a great Escape story going. To they, they so let me just Carly? say a, a few other things um, about that. Hello, hello, Atlantis Graphic and Web Design Ireland. I just love to say that uh, <laughs> they are they that. are the Italian uh, government. So you know, and even now, a lot of the restaurants are refusing to pay. You know that back pay the. Pizza, you know, pizzo, the, the, the pizza. Pizzo. Yeah. Uh, in fact, they'll have it on their storefront, non pago pizza. Um, and just recently, the head of Condorelli um, Nuggets Sweets, if you guys know Condorelli, the candy, the candy, candy delicious, he does nuggets delicious. and things like that, he refused to, uh, he got threatened, right? Because yeah, he got he shaken down. Sh shaken they tried to shake him down. He said, screw, I'm not going to pay you to pay the piso. Yeah. So, you know, everyone was writing about it. So people are speaking up. And generally my friends, when, you know, like next to the gym, there's this big, uh, huge villa that's been under construction for like four years. And it's like sort of a joke uh, among my friends at the gym. Oh, yeah. That's the mafia. That's the mafia's a daughter. The guy's building something for the mafia's daughter. But so it, it's people talk about that. People, you know, shake their head. So it is something. Um, you know, the two, you ever hear that? Wait a second. My cousins live in Katana and I've been there many, George many Jones. times. Awesome, George. Did you ever hear the old, uh, the old saying, revenge is a dish best, best served, served cold? cold. You, understand, you know what that yeah. means? Okay. Oop. That's pretty much how it is, okay? You're not gonna get you're not gonna hit get outright game warfare like like you, you had back in the eighties and nineties. Does Sicily have a problem with gypsies or Roma people? In downtown Catania, you can see there's one woman that always has her a kids. problem. The word is problem. Well, let me finish. I don't think they have a problem. And there's one woman uh in Catania, in downtown Catania, and she's always has her baby and her kids going and begging. So she's I've seen her, it's not a huge problem. So I would say not Roma a people. She's talking about Romanians. I'm well, it's the gypsies yeah. and the Roman. You know that woman. Yeah, but right wait a minute. Him. Wait a minute. You have two different things. You have gypsies and then you have Romanians. Okay, the Romanian nationals who come here. Very interesting enough, most of them have gone back to their home country in Romania because yeah. of COVID. Okay, but that's a problem primarily in the northern cities like Rome. Yes. Or even worse, Joe's, like Florence. Joe Asioni, isn't the mafia in Calabria the most feared now? 
Yes, Joe. it has been for a while, and yeah. it's not just now, Joe. It, it's been for a long time. Although there's yeah. a huge maxi trial going on right now for the Calabrese uh, 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 mafia, 350 mafiosos. There, the big difference is, you see, in Calabria, you can't knock on their door and say, "Hey, I want to join your your, your the mafia." You can't do that. It's all clans, okay? It's tight family organization. They don't let anybody in. So it's very difficult, nearly impossible, and it has been, to infiltrate the Calabrian yeah. Mafia. The Sicilian Mafia, what a very interesting phenomenon happened during the era that we're talking about is when guys flipped, when uh, they, be called, they became what they call penitents, and they ended up being state's witnesses. And the reason this happened to begin with was because the, Col the Colonese clans, after they defeated... Uh, the, the, the people from Palermo, they they took to heart what Toto Riena, their leader, said. You know, if the finger hurts, better to cut, cut off, off the, the arm. Hand, the arm. Right. So what they would do is they would then get rid of all the family, the extended family. Okay, so if a mafiosi uh, got killed, then and he had sons, then they're gonna get killed, or even the wife would get killed. So, anyways, this one guy named uh, Tommaso something or other, he escaped. He was one of these. A mafioso guys, and he went to Brazil, and in retribution, uh, Rihanna and his clan killed his family. They killed his son. They actually put him in acid and all this other stuff. He came back. He was arrested. He came back, and he was the first penitent to testify against organized crime back then, and that opened up you know, the door. Open the door to others. Yeah. To you know, there's a crime in Italy that we don't have in the United States where a lot of guys get jailed on. It's called Mafia Association. That's the name of the crime. So if you're associating with mafioso, if you're associating with them, that's a crime. It's just unbelievable. All right, let's move on. Okay, move we're all on. done. That's all we want right. to say. Um, first and I'm not going to say what happy are you doing? anniversary. What are, you gonna, what are you drinking? Today I'm drinking, uh, I'm drinking <laughs> a Bloody Mary today. It's a good one too. Uh, so. Okay, so listen to what happened uh, to us or with us for us for us. Uh, so our friends who have the hotel here, uh, residents, Cecilia's residents, they just uh, bought a golf course and we got to see it yesterday. And it is 18 holes. It's right outside of Lingua Glossa. So the ride up there, up the mountain of Etna, was absolutely spectacular. So we started, <coughs> you know, at the we took the highway, right, uh, to, to, towards Tarmina and got off at Humafredo and then the ascent. So where, where did, we, did we go? Piatno Etnea. Yeah, yeah. Piedmonte Etnea, Lingua Glossa. And well, it's Explosion so of colors. Of colors. And, Explosion of colors and smells. And the flowers, the flowers that are indigenous to Etna were out and they smelled. Fantastic. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to arrive. Other, it was so beautiful. It was a good ride. ride. It was just and there were the pink flowers as well. Anyway, we arrived and uh, I <laughs> I played a little bit, so I'm a little bit sore today. Uh, but you took a ride all to see the whole 18 Listen, holes, I, right? Listen, I golfed my whole my whole life, okay? Before I hurt my leg, I was I, I golfed. Not, you know, I wasn't any good, but I golfed, okay? And I, I really believe what Mark Twain used to say about golf. He used to say, it's a nice walk ruined okay but but basically <laughs> i always loved the sport i could never master it and i had the honor of you know golfing in some terrific courses but how was yesterday's life. course because this all I did course is unbelievable it's 18 holes lots of with the settings around. in the settings uh it, it reminded me uh, like the salem country club in pbd massachusetts where they always have the pga tournament lush it's a par 72 okay it's a tough course, okay? Andrea and uh, Francesco uh, uh, have completely refurbished it. Yeah, it's a this week they're opening there. up the restaurant They're going to have a hotel there. They have youth classes. But why we were interested uh, in it was to see if we could, again, partner with our, our friends into doing golf tours would you guys be interested in a so we're golf, gonna do tour? Some golf tour? Leave me a tours. comment. I'm so curious. So even if you come on one of our tours, for example, we'll you want to take a option. day off, we can make arrangements for you it's to get well transported there, golf there. Um, I think down the line, we may even put together something that's going to be, you'll have More your choice, organized. one, two, three days golfing and the rest of the time coming with us. 
what a great experience it was. And these guys are really two, you talk about two lights yeah. in Sicily, huh? These yeah. Francesco and Andrea are just unbelievable. Um, George says, my hometown, Castiglione. Yeah, this is say that's up on the Borgs. That's a beautiful town. Yeah, we town. passed that, Great yeah. town. Uh, I'd want to tell Aldina, even though it could seem a weird thing, Catania is one of the secure towns throughout yeah. Italy, and I agree. What, um, what guess why? Because the mafia, <laughs> has got the whole control of the criminality. Correct. You know, that is That's a very much, yeah. good point. Uh, escaped is a bloody Mary. We just bought some organic tomato juice. Where did you get organic tomato juice? We'll mix one quickly. I haven't been able to I'll find tell you what, some. if you're in Sicily, right? They, they listen, are in Sicily. Okay, listen Remember, to me. they're the ones from England okay. and he's Hungarian. Guys, if you're gonna have a bloody Mary, in the market, in all the markets, they sell a, a vodka. It's called Russian Standard. Russian standard number one from St. Petersburg. The best vodka you ever have. Okay, it's in a silver bottle. Russian standard. Yeah, awesome. awesome. Um, uh, a golf course that is cool, hopefully brings more tourists. Yes, that is what we're hoping. Uh, Sue says, Al, please expand on Florence gypsies visiting this fall. Okay. Uh, it's really troublesome in my view. I've said this for many years. What's troublesome? The gypsy situation in 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 the panhandler situation in Florence. They're literally oh. they literally litter the sidewalk. And let me tell you something. They're like the major league of gypsies, professional solicitors. These people, they yeah. they, they get on their knees, they stretch themselves out. I mean, you have to not have a heart uh if you know from a few coins, however, it's their occupation. Yeah, it happened. I mean, These, every that's time. what they do for a living. That's what the culture is all about. That's what they've done for a living. Okay. Afterwards, you go around the corner and they're all sitting around a tree and they get into the Mercedes and they go home. Of course. Okay. Uh, but they're just a pain in the neck. I, I don't understand why is, they do it. There are some people, you know, even when we stop at uh, that place in Catania and there's a guy playing the accordion and then he'll come right over there and expect you to give him money. Watch, so, out, for the, watch out for the little the little kids that are yeah. with them because they're they're trained pickpockets. They yeah, can, the, like the woman, like the woman at the Piazza Duomo I told you about. Ciao from Mia Familia. I love this conversation. Oh, Pac, really? I was thinking of you. Now you can first say, I got to tell you that this guy, and I've also got uh, for many, many years, but this golf course was very, very impressive. You got the golf carts and uh, the reception place where they have the restaurant and you can get a snack is beautiful. You don't, you don't Overlooking understand how beautiful the golf it is. Course. It's just, I mean, one of the halls, the 17th hall, you've got a, you've got an unimpeded view of that now. I mean, it, it's close oh, that's by. Right. It's close that's by. Right. And well, yes, it's on the foothills. Yesterday it was erupting. Yesterday yeah. it was erupting. So I Francesco stopped the, the golf cart and we just looked. Yeah. And we looked at it to each each other and then we gave she's each other like, a high five. She's blowing from two ends, I saw. Remember on the drive up. Sounds um, like a Saturday night at St. Francis. <laughs> <laughs> Shall be better late than ever. Good Go to on, see B. you. Hey, B, can I say no, 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 more? no. Hold it, hold it, hold it. All right, all right. Uh we got the tomato juice from a farm was it yesterday. Oh, I need to know about it. Oh, this. good. You can okay. use Posata if you want. Uh, by Joseph the way. Bonanno. Sure. Joe Bonanno. He was he was uh Joe Bonanno was Joe he was a, a crime figure, organized crime figure from New York City. The uh, Sicilian Mafia was in cahoots with the uh the uh, all the borough leaders in New York City. I mean, come on, there were also Sicilians over. Are there, there hotels near the golf course? Yeah. We would be interested in a golf tour. My husband will golf and you can drop me off at the market. I'll Helen, tell you. wait a second. I'll tell you what. So this is what we're thinking. We're thinking of doing like maybe three, four days of touring the area, you know, and staying at their hotel and, you know, doing the Catania, Tarmina, Ortigia, you know, maybe adding a few other downtown um, Catania, if I hadn't said that. And then doing like three days of golfing. Now, you asked about the markets. You dropped me off at the market. We'll stay in that area, and the area is beautiful enough, and there are enough markets for those people who do not want to golf. <clears throat> five, ten minutes away, Lingua Glossa. Yeah, we have to make we have to make individual plans. Right now, they have five hotel rooms already ready to rent out, and by next year, they'll have another twelve. And you never know; there's a hotel that's uh, right right on the 
grounds that they're thinking of they're buying. Working, so yeah. we'll we'll see what's going to happen with these guys. As they said, they're enlightened businessmen, and yeah, you know, they've they've breathed they've been, life back into this place. It's so good sure. to see. It's so good to see. Now, uh, I yeah, Francesca Romano, I talked about the pizza connection earlier when <clears> we <throat> talked yeah. about um, Giovanni Falcone and Paolo Borsellino. Um, now, where is that golf course? It is called Picciolo Sicilia's. Picciolo and uh, golf right course, at, right, right outside of Edna. Picciolo, which means little. P i c c i l i o. Picciolo. Okay, it means, it means this actually means there's two Small. meanings. One is, is is the stem of a certain plant that's up there, but. To me, everybody says it's piccolo, which means small, the small golf course. But it's really not a small golf course. It's a spectacularly beautiful, challenging, great yeah. uh, golf course. Can I talk now? Uh, we had a kid pretend to help carry our luggage, maybe 12 years old. He wouldn't let go of our luggage, and my friend had to kick him a couple of times to get rid of him in Florence. Uh, but but listen, like the subway, Julie, New York City crime out of control in New York. You have right. to watch when you leave the in, Rome any airport. Big wait a minute, city. When you leave the Rome airport, okay, between where you pick up your luggage and the the door, okay, that's where you get to get pickpocketed. Okay, you have to leave a COVID three foot diameter around you. If anybody comes within three feet, stop. Okay. Yeah. Do if especially because what could happen? Someone's going to bump you one way to distract you, and when you're looking at that person to bump you, the other person is pickpocketing you. Okay. It's happening. That happens Brazil. all over the world in every no, major city. I'll tell you what. They have it to an art form in Rome's airport. Okay. <laughs> they have it an art form in Don't, many places. That's why we always say, you know, make photocopies of all your, exactly. your things. Hide your money. Don't keep it in a wallet. And Pat says, never sakes. carry a purse when traveling anywhere. ID, money, et cetera, put it's in crazy. front of crazy. I used to always we keep always my cash people, in my shoe. I put it in my shoe. Or, or your socks. Let them cut off my foot. It. If they need it that bad, they can have it. In my view. Uh, Jody De Luca, buona domenica a tutti. She's in Hi, Jody. California. She's up early. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me just, now can I talk? Yeah. All right, good. What do you mean now can you talk? Can All you right. talk in this whole time? Anyways, so... <laughs> Our tour business is oh, back yeah. on track. Okay, we're going to have our tour, our first tour ready to go is going to be the first, roughly within the first two weeks of October. Okay, we've already moved five people over there. Uh, and what we're going to do, we're not going to have a tour out west because it doesn't seem that the people are interested this year. They want to defer till next year. So if that's the case, we're willing to have a second East Coast tour the second two weeks of October, okay? Or November. Or November, okay? We Whatever are available for, for private work in October, excuse me, September. We're also available for private work in November. And if there's sufficient interest, we'll do a Christmas tour, yeah. all right? So if you're interested, give Esther a jingle. She's got the particulars on it. I don't because I forget them, but um, come on with us. That's number one. Number two, okay, and I want to thank two people so far that have joined our uh, private members group this morning. We have a private members group that costs a cup of coffee a month. It costs $1.99. And we're in the process of filling it up three times a week. With well, it's just a way for people to support our channel. So you, you you're know, right. A they little bit that. of yeah. support, and we, and we put some content that we don't put on our regular place. Right. Our now, regular can I stuff just go is still back free. To the tours for a second before sure, you sure. do that. Uh, don't leave this uh, chat. But when you're done, if you go to www.youmeandsicily.com. Our tours from 2020 are there. They're going to be very similar. The prices are going to be a little bit different. But it's just so you get a little bit of a sense of what type of work that we do um, around the island. Now, also, we do very uh, customized. So if you want to do something different than is on the program, we can also work on that. Over the years, we've established a lot of uh, contacts and partners that we're so happy to. Uh, okay. Now, wait, before you do that. So that's number one. Number two is... If you're new around here and haven't subscribed, please make sure you subscribe because we not only come to you live and do these videos twice a week, but we also have episodes from all over Sicily. So that's what I wanted to say. Next, I have two more things to say. Okay. Don't we have to thank somebody? 
Oh yes. Ah, yeah, go ahead. We got on our, we got a very generous donation from uh Dusty and Michael Costello, who also were the sponsors of the video on Isola de la Femina. Thank you guys. Would Deeply thank appreciate you, it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh Isola de la Femina. If you haven't uh seen that episode, that is under Explore. One of my favorite Joe DiMaggio's people, favorite people are in that little town. Okay. Great canola too. Wait a minute, that's love one. healed with Rachel Zerzow. By the way, I watched some of your cooking yes, it videos. Does. Very good videos. Uh, this is Lee have a kind of East Coast vibe versus, but oh yeah, for sure. The West Side is far different. People even look different. More sophisticated uh, here. <laughs> I would tend to agree. Uh, not to insult anyone watching on the, food's the different. West Coast. The food's different. The, the food's people, different. the dialect is different. The landscape is completely different. I mean, the, the beaches landscape. are better in the West Coast, though. Although. Yeah. Call us the, the beaches south of Santa Cruz, especially in uh, Avila, are just unbelievable. But up here, it's all rocks on Lido's, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, wooden structures, and you have to jump in. There are some white, like uh, Bianca in Siracusa. See, yeah, yes, I yes. know that. That's why I said that. Wait okay, a wait a second. Let me just go. There was another question. Okay, this is important. Uh, Wait a sec. Why can I talk about your books? Because someone wants to know about your books. All right. So here's what the story is. Okay. Due to popular demand, I was having a, I had a, a, a sale uh, last month. I, I wanted to get rid of them because my daughter Jennifer says, look at that. You know, we're moving. We're doing some blah, blah, blah. Because she's the one that ships them. She says, why don't you have a sale? So I had a sale. If you go to alfredzappala.com. Angelo, yeah. That's my uh, website. www.alfredzappala.com. You're going to see a book sale, my three books for $19, okay? I haven't pushed them since Jennifer said that. But here's what I'm going to do. Between now and when I get to the States, July the 31st. So for the next two months, I'm going to push them. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep that open for three, three for 19 bucks, including free shipping. But I'm going to include in the uh, – in the uh, the shipping to you, I'm going to sign those books. I haven't signed yeah. the other ones because I've been here for the last two years. Uh, by the way, for those of you who have books, uh, just so you know, uh, we're going to have a meet and greet in August someplace. And if you bring your books, I'll sign them. But for you people who buy them now, they'll be they'll be signed by me. And I'm also going to put in as a bookmark some beautiful Sicilian postcards, postcards. for you. Too. That's a great no, idea. No, 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 no addition. Listen, cards. Sean Lewis, I love Claremont. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The Hinderland is amazing. I agree. I agree. But we prefer Sean, you want to know something? The Hinderlands are, are amazing there, but we have the Nebrodi Mountains here, which is equally as amazing. I mean, we, honestly. We've got Etna here. Yeah, no. The, let me tell you. As I said it's a million times, Sean, we happen to have the privilege of living in a living museum. Yeah. Okay. We honored this place. And the entire North, island. south, east, west. Yeah. doesn't make any There's difference. There's something for everyone. For I, sure. I'm whimsical about favorites. I have no favorites. I love the whole I love the whole island. Yeah. You too, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Are you guys having some kind of video problem? Leave me a message in the chat. Someone no, this... just asked me if there was a problem. Uh, wait, okay, I have one more. Very good news announced. about yes, we're excited. Yeah, we're uh, and Joe, Sean, no, the other thing too. is as the more we explore um the island, the more we discover all the treasure. So definitely the entire island. We just prefer the side. Okay. What I was getting say? more and more requests about the Trinacria thing that we had over Christmas. I had 20 sterling silver Trinacrias okay. that sold out in about, I don't know how quickly. They were $59, right? Wait a Stop. second. We're going to have to, you guys, give, What's me, the matter? It's working. give me a second. The video is very choppy, so I'm going to give it a minute. And if not, I have to switch in. Don't go anywhere, we'll you done. guys. Hmm? What's that? Don't. Okay, hold it. It's hold fine. It. It's just working now. Okay, let us know if it's uh, yeah. fixed now. Okay. All right. So in any case, these Trinacos, sterling silvers, are about as big as a, a quarter. Solid sterling silver. We get them from our friend up in uh, Todd Mina. The $59, including shipping. And boom, I get 20 of them, and then they sell out. Well, I'm going to get another 20. It looks like I'm going to get another 20. Okay. So I, I will ship them. I will ship them when I get home uh, in August. If you want one, message myself or Esther for information. Okay. What okay. do you have to do? All right. No, the people are saying the video is fuzzy, can hear you, but video uh, keeps freezing. Okay. Don't go anywhere. 
because I'm going to just switch here something real quick. Oh, okay. All right. So what did you do? No, keep going, honey. Okay. Oh, okay. Hmm? okay, keep going. Okay, so, all right, we'll do testing, testing, one, two, three. No, it's fine. Keep going, Everything though. Everything works. Yep. Okay, okay. So, so anyways, we have the Trinacrias uh, that we're going to do. Now, tomorrow is a very special day for us. Because we're going to be celebrating the 29th wedding anniversary of Mike and Anne Marie Watt. 29 years they've been together. That's that exceeds the sum total of all my previous wives. <laughs> it's unbelievable. In any case, we're going to Catania. Okay. We're going to Antique Sicilia, right? Yeah. She's going to have her cozies. Am I correct? Yeah. And it's be it's be our first going out to a restaurant in. Since Valentine's Day, we're both so Keep excited. Keep talking. I have to be the engineer here. Keep talking, honey. All right. So anyways, if you have any more questions, let me know. Why don't you keep on going, put it up so I can answer some of your comments over okay. here, you know? Uh, the picture. Okay. I want Sean Lewis. Uh, we'll message you. Okay. I want one, Sean. And just message us that she'll give you the information. Okay. They're great. You got to love them, by the way. They make perfect presents for Christmas. Okay. Uh, Al Zappel, I think... Uh, we're going to have to wrap it up a little bit early uh, why? today. Um, why don't we wrap it up? Do you have one more thing to say? Hmm? Let's wrap it up for video is a little bit fuzzy and going in and out. So listen. She's the producer. I'm look, just the talent. First of I'm all. I'm the Elvis. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Whatever thank you, you say. Thank you for spending some time with us today. Uh, drop me a message if you need any information about anything we talked about, including Alfred's books, the yeah, Jimmy. Uh And for that, arrivederci. Have a great day. Anything else? Thank yes. you for watching. This, this is my beach hat today. I'm wearing my beach hat because I like it. Well, do you guys want us to stay a few more minutes? Stay Roberta a few more minutes. says we can stay. Okay. All right. All right. So we'll if you try can hear it. You real well. it. It's just a. You know, it doesn't. Don and I are celebrating our fiftieth wedding anniversary next Sunday. Oh, wow, gee, that's just unbelievable. Okay, that's great. And you had a good time in Aruba, I heard too. Okay, yeah, Buona Domenica, everyone, and uh, we'll see you on Wednesday or another episode of You, Me, and Sicily. Okay, ciao, ciao, love you.